Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I've got another uh, another review for you today on another new product. Uh, this time we've got some um, brass metal undercarriage legs from a new company called Aerocraft Models. They're an English company, uh, been around for about a year and run by a guy called Alistair. Um, Alistair's been modelling for over 50 years and he's been in the actual model industry for around 15 years and he's running this as a part-time business and at the moment he's got a small but fairly fairly diversified range shall we say if you want to take a look at his website I've got a link down below in the in the comments down below um, go and have a look at his website and have a look he's got stuff in 70 second scale 48 scale and 30 second scale and um, he's kindly sent me some products for review on the channel and I've got three sets of undercarriage legs to show you but today I'm just going to concentrate on the the undercarriage legs for the B24 um, Liberator from Hobby Boss in 130 second scale. Now, some may call this an upgrade, some may call it as an accessory. It's not, I think it's a must have. Um, just as a sideline, I have weighed my kit in the box and it is over three and a half kilos, uh, or just about three and a half kilos, shall I say. Um, so let's just say that all in, the model built is going to be three kilos, three and a half kilos maybe. After you've added nose weight, the instructions say 300 grams of nose weight. So you're probably going to put 500 grams just to be on the safe side. So that's a lot of weight on those undercarriage legs. And when you actually see the design of not only the shape of the legs, but the actual way that Hobby Boss have made them, I think you'll agree that metal inserts on this kit are pretty much a necessity, especially over time. So how are the undercarriage legs made? Well, if you haven't seen reviews of this model, um, I've done some. You can see them on my channel. Um, I've also just done a, an upgrade video for a, an instrument panel set from Airscale. But here we've got the, the way the legs go together. And it's slightly unusual in that you've got the, the bottom part of the leg is finished. And then the upper part of the leg, this is the nose gear by the way, is made up with a central stem and two outer plastic pieces going around it. And if you saw this and weren't, didn't know, you'd probably think that that leg was metal in the kit. And if you ask me, I think Hobby Boss intended to do it that way, but the accountants probably got hold of them and changed, made them change their minds. But basically, yeah, you've got the rear leg, the main gear is the same. You've got the centre part here, and then the uh, two plastic halves going on either side. If you're wondering why I'm, why I'm wearing a glove and you're not a regular on the channel, um, two days ago I cut my thumb real bad and uh, I've got a bandage on and you don't really want to see that so I thought I'd cover it up with a glove. Um, so there, and it wasn't a modelling accident by the way, I was cutting a drain pipe with a Stanley knife. So there we go. Right, so what do we get um, in the kit? These are the legs we get in the kit. They're plastic, okay, as you can see. And just by looking at them, taking one look, you can see they were probably designed to be made of metal from the outset. I mean, why would you make them out of plastic and not attach them to the sprue? You know, you would think they'd be on the same sprue with the rest of the undercarriage parts. Now, the big issue with these for me, as an engineer, is not only are they plastic and are they weak, but they've actually put all the load into one area here. Get my pointer. Here is where all the pivot load is going. So you can see that when they bend, they're going to try and snap on that point there. And what they do, they fit inside the leg, like so. This is the main gear. They fit inside there, and then the other half goes on. And they're clamped in like that. Okay? So, if you can imagine now the way you're looking, all the weight is here. The aircraft is sat here to the left. So it's pushing down, and it's pushing into my hand this way. So look what happens when I put some load on it. It's trying to pull out of the undercarriage leg there. And eventually what it's going to do is split those plastic parts apart or just snap off. Because all of that weight is trying to bend that leg up. And bear in mind, like I said, it's going to be up to four kilos. If you're going to start adding resin and photo etch, I mean, I don't know if you've ever felt, if you're going to start adding flaps and stuff, you know, photo etch flaps weigh a ton. So... This could end up being a very, very heavy model indeed. So they're not going to put up with it. Um, there is another issue 
and I'm going to cover it now while I'm on the plastic parts. We've got these legs here which go on. So that one goes in there. Try and hold that with my finger. <laughs> and that one goes in the top there. That one will stay on its own. So that's how your undercarriage leg is assembled, your main gear. And you can see here you've got some weak points at the bottom. Here and here. And I would suggest maybe I still will make these out of metal. I don't know. But I would suggest in the meantime what you do if you're building this model. Drill straight up through there. Point eight. Put a piece of 0.8 brass rod in there and that will just save it snapping off. Once it's actually located, everything's triangulated, it should be fine. But I think if it takes a knock, it will snap off at that very weak point just there. And the same on that one. And this one, when I cut it from the sprue, I don't know if I can show you on the camera, but you can see already it's got a white mark on it where it's been flexed, com flexed coming out of the mould. So it's already been uh, compromised. But anyway, this is a review about metal undercarriage legs. And then when we look at the, uh, the nose gear, what we get with the nose gear is these two halves going on like this. And basically the, it's hexagonal so that the, the two halves are keyed. And they slip on like that and I've got that half upside down, I'm sorry. Having the glove makes things a little awkward. But again, you've got this problem of all the leverage being in this point here. And you can see how much that flex is. I could break it off, but I'm not going to. So that's why I say I think it's a necessity. But also bear in mind, just in case somebody decides they want to comment, if you think about the physics of things, basically, if the tail weighs 500 grams, and the nose weighs 200 grams, it's going to be a tail sitter. So to stop the model tail sitting, you're going to add 300 or 310 grams to the nose. So therefore, your nose is now 10 grams heavier than the tail, so the nose will sit on the ground and the tail will be suspended in air. So all of the weight that the front nose is actually feeling is not 500 grams, or 510 grams, it's actually only feeling about 10 grams. All it's going to feel is the difference between the weight of the nose and the weight of the tail. So your nose gear doesn't necessarily have to be that strong. Your main gear does, because as you add more weight to the nose to counterbalance the tail, then your main gear is going to be taking all the, the dead weight. So bear that one in mind guys I've seen people concerned about nose gear and and the way they fit under the cockpit and stuff like that in aircraft but bear in mind the nose gear will only ever take the amount of weight it takes to counterbalance the tail anyway I digress so let's have a look at these metal legs and here we go these are the brass legs that you get from Aeroscale and you've got two mains and one nose and you can see they're pretty much a direct copy of the plastic parts so they're gonna fit your kit straight away beautifully now, I'm going to be honest with you, I did have to do a little bit of clean-up. All inside these main gear legs, there's ejector pin marks you can see, and some of them have got flash around them, so they've got to be cleaned up. But also, I feel there's maybe a slightly thicker section of brass here than there is on the plastic parts. So I've just had to go around and just scrape away in here, just scrape away the plastic to make it fit. It's literally nothing, it took me a few minutes. So now that fits in there beautifully. The outer leg goes on like that, all clamps together. And now you've got an extremely strong, but still beautifully detailed undercarriage leg, just as Hobby Boss intended. And you haven't got all this flexing here. You're not putting all the load in that area there where you are, but it's strong enough to put up with it. So there you go. You've got a beautifully strong, well-made, well-represented product. Which brings me on to one point as well. I noticed on Alistair's site, Aerocraft, he said that all his legs come with some cleanup required. They'll be flashed. There may be some inclusions or whatever. If you look at the way that leg is cast, I mean, yep, there's a bit of a seam line. Yep, there's a mark there. There's a, a nub there where it's been cut off a gate. And then we've got a sprue tab on the top. That is nothing. When you compare them to some other manufacturers that I won't name, who also make metal undercarriage, 
they use white metal. So why don't you just buy those? I've seen them in Hannant's. I've seen them advertised. You could buy the full metal gear from Hannant's, which you don't have to use these plastic parts at all. But they're just direct copies of the plastic parts, probably. And they're white metal. Now, this is an undercarriage leg from a 72nd scale aircraft. And you can see the amount of cleanup I've had to do all around the seams, everywhere, trying to get this to be... It's still not as neat as that is, fresh out of the uh, fresh out of the die. And the other problem with these legs is, I can show you now, they just bend. They're white metal. They just, they're very ductile. They're almost like lead. And you can see how much they just, they just bend. So really, what's the point in replacing the plastic with that? It's, you can see it's just, <laughs> I'm not worried about bending it because it probably won't break. It will just flex back. But you can imagine over time, the weight of the aircraft on that is just going to, what's the point? Especially a model this heavy. So there we go, guys. And that is the brass undercarriage leg set from um, from Aerocraft Models. Uh, it's actually called the internal brass undercarriage leg set. Um, and as I say, it's £20, available from his website. So get on over and have a look. He's got some other interesting stuff on there too, as I mentioned earlier. And um, if you do order them, please, uh, please tell him you saw it on here. So uh, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe. Uh, if you like this, please like and um, have a look around the channel. There's lots more stuff to see. So bye for now and happy modeling.